Yo, what's going on? It's your boy LP82 back with another episode of Turning Hemmed Up with my boy Young Tech, aka Wordplay. Yes, and we're back with another hitter, another hitter. We got some, well, I don't know if we want to call them guests, but shit, I guess we're guests to guests. I don't know. It's their house and our house. <laughs> roommates, man. It's our roommates. Uh, our roommates. <laughs> so uh, these brothers right here are very talented, man. And the crazy thing about these brothers, they're all in different different areas. They're not doing the same thing. So, you know, they are really, really young. Well, not really young. I'm sorry. I take that back. They're mature. Young. Mature young. I say we young. I don't know. People like really, really young. Were they sixteen? Nah, <laughs> nah. But they're they're young, young black entrepreneurs out here doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? I got to give it to them. So we're gonna have them introduce themselves. Oh wait, wait, wait. I got some for that. Oh wait, that's the wrong way. Where is it at? Uh, for, uh. Ah, fuck it. I forgot the sound. Hey, yeah, yeah. It had applause on there. Yeah, well, we're gonna keep all that. We're gonna keep all that because that was funny. I'll take this all niggas down. Yeah, real shit. So, once y'all introduce, introduce yourself, <clears throat> go first. I go first. Uh, what's up, everybody? You know, everybody over here pretty much already know me, but my name Ty. I go by Ty Levon. Uh, I make music, I mix music, I engineer my own music, you know, and Shit, I just do what I could. Oh, can I cuss? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, we, yeah. Ain't, we ain't that famous yet. <laughs> <laughs> shit, yeah. I do a little bit of everything. You know, I double, I double. But, yeah. Okay. Shit, ain't much more to say. Yeah, that's trades. what's up. Jack of all trades, you know? Um, what's good, y'all? Um, I go by Isaiah Jackson. I'm a, uh, yeah, with the, with the braids. <laughs> Cur- the currently the going braids. on. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter. Shit, I write like books and movies and shit right now too. So, yeah, I'm working on that, getting everything going. So that's me. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That's the, okay. That's the one thing that trips me out. Yeah, when niggas write books, like how I'm you, like I'm <laughs> that trips me gotta, out. You got to really I'm go like through a process. I was writing this movie and now it's adapting into a story because I got some advice to. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get into that on you know the whole full gram. But yeah, I'm trying to I'm just adapting it into a book and like its own story so that way if it needs to shift into a movie, then I can do that and have more depth into the story. But that's for the yeah. Damn, this nigga yeah, D'Angelo, <laughs> D'Angelo and Spike Lee wrote the one. Hey, that's funny because I've been being called D'Angelo like for the last Four weeks now, uh, three weeks. <laughs> that, hey, hey, so, was it females telling you that? Majority of the time. Yeah, that nigga gonna keep them no braids. Dudes, <laughs> <laughs> he for sure gonna keep them braids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so it's on you, sir. Come it's on. fucking good, y'all. It's <laughs> making it free here. Um, really, I kind of just you know I'm kind of manage this nigga. Um. Uh, I kind of just like facilitate what goes on with our uh, organization, Adapt or Die, um, and kind of just you know I'm just kind of here, you know, I'm just Nick. You feel me? I'm right, here when you need me, to, when you need me. He trying to downplay himself, man. He kind that's of nah. That nigga, he manages that that's man. That's the best way to put it. That's the be- that's honestly the best way to put it though. I'm there when you need me. When okay, you need me. facilitator right there. Exactly. That's, that's the what's up. That's what's up, man. Hey, good that's shit. What's going on, y'all? It's King Cut, the barber, entrepreneur extraordinaire, you know? Hey, straight to the point. He's straight like, extraordinaire. Put the mic down. All right, who next? Oh. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's How'd up. y'all come up with y'all name, Adapt or Die? Oh, Adapt or Die? That's funny. <laughs> See, I would do it, but I'm going to let this nigga do it right here. You, okay. you tell him. I'm going to let you tell him. Adapt or Die came like niggas was... Going on hikes like all the time, like at Lytle Creek, and this nigga was like, "Nigga, we all do like some shit, and we all like this collective. Like, we need this, we need a like a, a name, like like how we present ourselves, and we couldn't get it and shit like that. Like, we were just going through putting it together, and I was sitting at at my um apartment at the time. When I was at school, and I was just sitting there playing the game, and this nigga called me. He was like, "Hey, nigga," he was like, "What you think of this?" And he was like, "Like ad- adapt or die," and I was like. And he was like, draw, draw, but like, can you like try to put together a logo or some shit like that? And I was like, nigga, all right, I'll, I'll call you later and I'll see what I got. And 
That's how shit kind of built up, put the shit together, and came up with that little slime design. And the nigga was like, I'm fucking with it. And I was like, all right. So, so, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Y'all right. took the initiative to even do that, though. You know what I'm he, saying? He just was like, put just it together. Thinking about it. So. Look, our yeah. actual logo. I got your brand. Hold on. Get it close up on it. Yeah, yeah. Walk up. No, 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 man. You got a strut, man. Model, man. Model, man. Because I didn't know at first I had this like grass idea and I was going to yeah. like, like make it like it was like this, like hed- hedging or some shit like that. And then and then I started thinking about some slime. I don't know why. And I was just like, let me see if I can like slime it out. Like I want it to be like tight, like something was going on. Like the shit was just random, like how everything, like we use a color wheel to put the colors and shit. Like it was weird. Like, right. <laughs> Most likely Slime so, Yeah hey, was, I, was, I don't know why I was thinking about that He was watching Nickelodeon Listening <laughs> Slim Thug At the same time like, Slime <laughs> I don't know why him. I was like That shit would be tight Hard as fuck yeah. that, that is actually Like an exact Photocopy of his drawing So yeah. the logo Is like Actually handmade Like I oh, I okay. drew the shit so And then handmade. Luckily At my school The Photoshop came With my like Shit, so I was like logging in. I was on Photoshop together, and I was putting yeah. this shit together. Okay, and it was difficult because I'm like I'm drawing this shit, so the edges ain't like crisp and shit like that. Nigga trying to invest for an iPad so I could do right, right, more a little. But I was like, he was like that shit, hard? and I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, so putting it together. So I have a question: How'd you guys meet? Shit, that's a long story. God damn, was it on hiking too? Y'all nah, niggas, nah. <laughs> bumped into each other. Yeah, like, y'all like child, nigga, childhood nigga. friends like that. Yeah, the man, part. it's like okay, me and me and Nick, we met in at frisbee. We go back to frisbee. Yeah, it's like, like roasting great. people, like really <laughs> roasting niggas. <laughs> Niggas don't know we used to bake niggas, lordy lordy, <laughs> bake niggas like casserole. <laughs> like, I'm not playing. Damn, yeah. yeah, well, it so was y'all probably them moments. Each, so y'all yeah. two knew each other the longest. From frisbee. Yeah. Oh, okay. I met and then, yeah, oh, you met a little later. Play, uh, yeah. yeah. I met this nigga. Oh, in play high football. Yeah. Yeah. I met yeah. this nigga on a different occasion too. Like I didn't meet him through this nigga. I just knew this nigga from just knowing the same people and that nigga. Yeah. He was always nigga I knew. He would. He wasn't like out here like all the time. But I'm like I know that nigga. That nigga yeah. cool. That's that's the homie. So so you're the talkative one, huh? I'm really the shy one. Nah, oh, but no, no, see, then that makes me feel good though, because you're yeah. really open right now, man. Yeah. You go, you I'm getting really off, you getting off. Yeah. He moments, he speaks that more. Th- that nigga can happen, but he's gonna he's the engager. Like yeah. he'll have a nigga really sitting there, like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I can tell he's more, like he's real blunt. I can tell he's real blunt. He's gonna have you engaged. Is. Like you're gonna be sitting in the conversation. The shit gonna be. It's gonna be good because he's engaged with it. So you like, well, fuck, nigga. Like, let me tell you something. <laughs> man. I wouldn't say blunt. I just more like. Nah, he hit I just right tell. Right I just tell you how it is. He know? blunt. Like I think we all pretty blunt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need yeah. that though. You need that. It's what makes you who you are. Yeah. 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 I, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Do you hold each other accountable? To yeah, to, to a certain extent, extent, yeah, I don't think we do it too much because yeah. you know it's still like a fresh group, so you know, yeah, we don't do it too much because you know it's still like you don't want too much friction, you don't want niggas to just be like ah fuck this, yeah. but we do it to a certain extent. Like if somebody's sitting down too long, like me for instance, like I'm supposed to be doing interviews and shit, so like you know yeah. for a while. It was cool because, you know, like, shit was going on, you know, it was COVID and all that shit. But then this nigga started getting on my ass. Like, hey, nigga, yeah. start doing it. Like, like he started doing like shit. You know? <laughs> I'm that stop you. Yeah. 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 So I was just like, uh, you right. They so, do, you know. They do it to me, too. They be exactly. Like, like, are are like, you guys honest with each other? Yeah. Yeah. About everything? So yeah. you will tell them, like, yo, I don't I've like I've told that. this nigga his yeah. music suck before. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need those people around. Yeah. Yeah. I've I need re- yes I've more recorded more. with this nigga. He will be like. That take was all right, but mm-hmm. you could do better. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So make, the, make you step your game up, though. It was on the 15th yeah. take, and I was like, nigga, is this it? Is this the one? <laughs> hey, my boy, Dr. Dre, now. <laughs> I like, did, I, did I, I get it? Listen, I've been listening to some of your music, man. I, I think you're pretty hard, man. Like, who inspired you? I appreciate that. Uh, who inspired me? As far as like where do I get my inspiration for my music? Yeah, like who 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 you listen to? Who are some of the people you listen to? It's it's hard to say who who inspires me. You know, like my favorite rapper is like Future. Mm. 
I listen to Future, but you know he like mainstream and stuff. But I used to listen to him like back back in the day. No, but okay. uh, like as far as inspiration for my music is literally how I'm feeling that day. It's like I don't aspire to be like anyone. I just wake up if I feel like making a melodic auto tune song. I'm gonna make one, <laughs> and that shit gonna sound hard. Like yeah. I'm gonna make sure that it like as as hard as I can make it sound. You're a big critic on yourself. Yeah, I'm probably sure my biggest good. critic. Yeah, like something that my boys could say is my hardest song. I could be like, but I could make, I could do something on that track that I hear in it that I can make, I can make better. I could bring the life out of that track a little bit more. Damn, I, how did you get into recording yourself? I think that's like that's something that a lot of people don't understand what it takes to be great is understanding how you should sound on tracks and stuff like that. Because ear. it's hard to work with other niggas. That's where it came from. <laughs> Number one reason. It's yeah, off time. It's hard. <laughs> I feel like to to work with other niggas, you got to reach a whole nother level first, like amongst yourself, first right. of all. But uh, what got me into recording is crazy. Like, like uh, Lil Bro did. Lil Bro, uh, Luke So Glory. Oh, uh, y'all need to know about him. Yeah, I don't even know about Luke. He he part of AOD too. Hopefully, hopefully, so, you know, we'll get him on the podcast as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's more than you guys. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, okay. yeah, it's, we deep. It's oh, like, ain't that deep, but we deep. This oh, okay. is the main. This is the structure. You feel me? It's the, oh, okay, this is the, the foundation. The foundation. Yeah. 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 We, I mean, we missing one, but yeah. you know. Okay. Part, this is what. Yeah. Yeah. When y'all start this whole whole thing, like what year was it? Twenty eighteen. Yeah, twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Summertime was like Chris. Awesome, <laughs> Chris. <18. laughs> it was just perfect timing because niggas is on day like. Okay, so shit. when you guys started AOD, was it more based off of just being friends and just something that we were just like band together just to be, like you say, <laughs> create something? Or was it really based off of music and all the other stuff? It was, honestly, it was a number of factors, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, one, we kind of noticed that. The social, social like, structure and, like, the way social life is going, yeah. like, in the world, just in life in general, is changing. Like, it's, everything is going digital, you feel me? Right. So it's easier for people to make a living or at least make another income off of, like, you know, YouTube, like, Instagram and shit like that. Right. So we kind of seen that trend starting, so we were like, okay, let's make our own little creative touch. Like, I know we there's, like, Thousands of people that's doing the same shit we doing. Why don't we just put our own little twist to it? Exactly. So it was that. Then it was, you know, kind of us because we were all in some type of school. Like he was in the, uh, he was in like tech school. Uh, this nigga was going to Fullerton. I was going to Laverne. So we all kind of just still oh, figuring so what out, like what we want to do, like figuring right. out what we want to do. Like you know, you know, we a bunch of hardworking niggas. Like we could figure something out. And, you know, we just kind of seen, we really seen it happening in our surrounding. Like, a lot yeah. of people in the Inland Empire are starting to, like, be more open to, like, the creative shit around here. Like, right. Instead yeah. of being so close-minded and, you know, trying to go work for Amazon and some shit. Like, niggas is actually <laughs> trying to do something. <laughs> yeah. are, y'all, are y'all all from the Inland Empire? Yeah. 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 Um, fucking San Bernardino baby. San Bernardino? San Rialto. baby. Rialto? Yeah. Rialto. Rialto? Oh, okay. The toe. That's hey, you know what? Yeah, that, yeah. give him the mic, man. He's being quiet <laughs> over there, man. Yo, man, let the people... Well, you, you did let them know what you do, but let the people know how you became who you are because I hear about you from quite a few people. I was even explaining to him, like, dude, man, this dude is like... Like I, he got, like I said, trophy. I said championships, but trophies. <laughs> hey, so it all started. Uh, I was born out here, in San Bernardino. Grew right. up in Rialto till I was seven years old. Then I moved to New Jersey, and I stayed out there till I was about sixteen, seventeen. And I moved back out here. And I knew when I was coming back out here, I didn't want to find a barber. So I right. had my barber out there teach me how to cut. And then uh, I started cutting other people just to kind of get better at it. But I realized it was something I can do. I kind of right. always been like an artist, a, a visionary. I used to draw a lot, do poetry. But eventually I stopped doing all that shit. And I just started using cutting to really express all of what I think, what I see, whatever I want to do. Right. And 
shit, I've just been following the vision till now. Out of, out of, you know, the barbering and stuff like that, I know you got a lot of endeavors that you partake in. So what are some of those other things that you do? Uh, I do some some clothing. I do, uh, I write. I still, I, I'm starting to get back into writing. Uh, like a movie script. I like movie scripts, books. Um, I like to just share perspective with people and really try to understand everything right. that's going on. That's what's up. So a big intellect. Yeah. yeah. How did you how 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 did you come to AOD? Like, was it more off of just friendship, or they seen something? You know, like, hey, man, why don't you come join us? It was it was just really being connected to the community, okay. and like yeah. just knowing everybody through brothers and siblings and friends of friends, everything like that. That's how I met Nick. Was through one of my friends. I've been cutting for a while, and uh, we just connected. Right. Dang, man, that's cool. So, like you said, I can tell that you guys have a very strong bond and you guys are very intelligent. You got your, you got a great head on your shoulders. And like you said, you guys are working towards something being positive. And that's what, like, especially not just the community, but Inland Empire, not just bigger than that. Being black, that's what we need. That's what we need. We need to see that. And that's good. You know, all bullshit aside, man, like real talk. I've been knowing Nick for a minute. Well, I mean, you know, I know I've, I followed you a long time ago. Uh, Instagram, yeah. I don't even know. Hey, well, see, you, that's what happens when you pop in. You don't be known when people follow you. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. That's when you know you pop. You're like, yo, you follow me? Oh, shit, that's what's up. Good luck here. Where can, where can people find y'all at? Uh, all, everywhere, honestly. Google. You could Google AOD and Adapt or Die. Instagram will pop up. We working on our website. Um... We own all social medias. Um, individually, we own all social medias. All right, so let, let's 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 uh, let's switch it. You know, I, I feel like the audience got a good understanding about who you guys are and what you guys stand for and what you believe in, right? So let's get into some not some yet. topics, really. huh? Yeah, it's just the tip of the tip oh, okay. of the tip of the eyes. See, hey, that's that that's that philosophical shit right there. That nigga's like, it's just surface. Uh, but nah, at this in the, at the same time, but let's get into some topics. Let's talk about some things. Let's get some things off our chest. That's, that's what real potting is, getting stuff off your chest. Conversation. So let's go. King Cut, man. Let's start with you, man. What 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 pissed you off this week? What pissed me off this week? Yeah. Uh let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Truth be told, as much as I know that we needed rain, I, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. That shit came too quick. Yeah. yeah. That um, rain it was, you know what? Man. <laughs> even even going back a little earlier this week, how windy it was. That yeah. Fontana wind yeah. is disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, it is. Disrespect. <laughs> yeah. Trucks all on the side of the road. Yeah. 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 It's, it's weather bipolar. Right? Yeah, yeah, real man. talk. Real talk. So... Yeah, uh, my boy, uh, what pissed you off this week, man? Come on, let the world so, know. Nigga, you know I smoke, right? Yeah, so, we know. <laughs> I lost my stizzy, nigga, and I just oh. lost that shit yesterday. <laughs> man, man, was, how much that cost? Hot. And it was uh, probably all together like $70. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I'll be hot too. Uh, uh, stizzy. Uh, nigga, I just bought that motherfucker too. <laughs> Ah. Yeah, I'll be pissed off too. Cop another one right after? Or? Hell no, I'm gonna wait like a week, maybe. <laughs> Shit, might be, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> Good. Man. So, what D'Angelo. What pissed you off? That nigga said D'Angelo. What's going on, man? What pissed you off, man? I think probably just dealing with my dog this week because. She's in heat right now. Oh, shit. And it's raining, and it's kind of hard to, like, just, pro like, deal with this. She got a lot of personality, so. What kind of dog you have? She's a pit mixed with a, a bulldog. Oh, shit. Yeah, she's aggressive, but aggressive. she's aggressive as fuck. But it's just, like, she, it's raining. It's just a lot right now, and that blood is just, like, I don't, man, I've seen I've seen people do that. Give like you know, um, healthy dogs give birth and all that. Shit. I can't do that shit. That I'm, shit is I crazy. Want to breathe in shit, blood blood everywhere. Like oh hell no. Nah. I mean, she gonna do it herself. They take care. of They do it all. They feed them, groom them. They do 
all that shit when they have them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She be straight. So, yeah, that's just dealing with that shit. That's been a frustrating week. Yeah, and damn. Nobody else going to get the motherfucker outside. <laughs> <laughs> she just there. <laughs> I'm like, all right, go, go get her. It's just me. All right, <laughs> all right sir. So, you up next. What pissed you off this week? Man, this shit happened yesterday. (laughs) That was a long ass man. This shit must really be disrespectful. (laughs) This shit happened yesterday. First of all, so I got got uh, another job and shit. I wasn't even supposed to go yesterday. I just went yesterday just because I ain't had shit to do. So I'm dealing with a drill. And I'd be damned if I didn't drill a fucking hole in my finger, man. Ooh, shit. Boy, I was pissed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nigga. Damn. Nigga, I was leaking. Oh, my God. I thought I needed stitches, but, you know, I took it like a G. I ain't going to die. That, that pissed me off, too. <laughs> yeah. Nigga start socking shit. Ah! <laughs> All right, so, like you said, you guys are uh, musically inclined, I, I, I would they say. I'm, you know, I'm just here. So, what are some of the... He's important, though. Yeah, he's very important. You need a guy like Nick. He's Always. The, he's the neutral light. He the glue. He the RZA out the group. <laughs> he the glue. They be like, who's RZA? <laughs> y'all, y'all, listen, y'all listen to Wu-Tang and all that type of stuff? Yeah. Didn't RZA rap? Huh? Didn't he rap, though? Uh, you call that rap? <laughs> I'm messing around now. Yeah, he's rapping, uh, I guess. I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I never like RZA. So, you're from New Jersey, right? So you you know you're from out here, but you lived in New Jersey. So what was like? What was the music scene back then? Oh, give him the mic. Give him the mic. My bad. My bad. At the time when I was growing up, it was a uh, it was a lot of the the South Jersey Philly rappers, mm-hmm. uh, Meek Mill, Joey Jahad, Reed Dallas, mm-hmm. like all the the, the 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 battle rap. You know, pre the and old that was, that was real classic. big. Yeah, yeah. Rap. Uh, and then. Uh, when I started coming out here, when I when I came out here, that's when Meek really started blowing up. Okay. And once he blew up, it kind of like it, it, everybody that was doing like more of the street rap. I got out here, I, I really didn't see who was doing it. Like currently, bro, just was taking over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what music did you listen to like growing up? What was your like? I was all over the place. I had like I would say I had phases. You feel me? Because I had like an old like. I had a brother. He was like like five, four years, five, damn, like five, six years older than me. Fix on my hand. <laughs> so uh, I kind of like listened to what he listened to. So you know, he listened to a lot of like, um, we listen like Fifty Cent, like Lil Wayne, Eminem, shit like that. You know, I would listen to like all types of crazy shit, like mainstream shit, like. I don't, I don't know what I was listening to. Like I, I remember like one point I was listening to like Ti. One point I was listening to like fucking like the king. Like, I was pretty much I was listening to whatever was like whatever was hot at the time. You know I was real updated with music. Like I would yeah. always follow like hot new hip hop and shit like that to stay updated with shit. Like th- shit, there was even one point I was listening to dubstep because I like back, like I like <laughs> shit, you feel me. So I was just like nigga. It was just I was all over the place as a kid. I was just trying to I was always trying to find something new and like interesting. Yeah. So, so you would say you're well rounded with the music. Not necessarily because I don't really know a lot of music history. You feel me? Like I just know a lot of shit from like probably like 2000 up. You feel me? Yeah. Like, probably listening to like you know Air Force Ones, like you know listening to like Nelly and like right. shit like that because you know I had brothers, older brothers and sisters, and like you know Jeezy and all that type of shit, but. You know, me personally, I was listening to like Kendrick Lamar. That's probably somebody I was really listening to a lot, like Kendrick right. Lamar. Um, who else? Like and Lil Wayne, probably. Yeah. And Lil Dirt. Seem like some a lot of people that listen to Kendrick listen to J Cole. You you listen to J Cole um, too? I didn't really start listening to J Cole until this nigga put put me on. Probably like 2014 Forest Hill Drive. That's probably when I really started listening to him. Right, but nigga, that. Everything I want to be, that's why I fucks with you. Yeah, like, nigga, I was like, damn, nigga, he had a nigga crying. Like, he had a nigga. Man, I was like, damn, this some real shit, though. So I know you. I know you guys. You're going to give us the R&B side of things. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm more well-versed than that. That's just like my, 
what I reference for like my day to day, but like I get all my music from like my family. So like my dad was like Tech Nine and Biggie and Pac and my mom is like DJ Quick, Snoop Dogg, Tweet, Aaliyah, Brandy and shit. My auntie is like YG, <coughs> O Ty Dollar Sign, like oh YG, O Ty Dollar Sign from like Just Red Up and like Beach House. And then like myself, like I'm everywhere. Like I listen to hello R and B. So my favorite artist though is J. Cole. So Right. Yeah, so that's what I listen to like majority of the time, but I'm like everywhere. I listen to old shit like my grandpa, like I love old old school music, so like Al Green, uh fucking Roy Roy Ayers, um um the Isley Brothers, fucking uh, Anita Baker. Taking it back. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm more, like on that. Like I'll have my days where I'm just like just going in, like I listen to Ray Charles and shit. Um, <laughs> Ray Charles. Yeah. <laughs> God. Cause God. He's a he's a pianist, so I'm I'm all about I just be zoned in, so I'll be hearing every fucking like sound. Like I'm oh, okay. hella like I just be like it takes me like the creation because you can see like I'm I listen to so so much just I can like to see how everything like develops and shifts as the time goes oh, and, like okay. how it just all came together because I'm like this nigga was creating this shit blind and making yeah. this like being able to like he touching niggas they ain't have no social media no nothing so he's making these niggas feel something through just a fucking radio so yeah. I'm like that should be putting it into perspective to me and I'd be like damn. Oh. Yeah, like he, they can't even see it, but they feel this nigga. Like you feeling a a, a song through a through a speaker, and it was just like when you able to like produce an emotion out of just music, then that's you doing something right. So for him to do that on that grand scale, and I see how it just shifts over time, I be I be listening to everything. So you really on the vibes, frequencies, <laughs> and all that type <laughs> of shit. That's what it's about. Hey, bro. hey my boy burning incense when he be listening to music. <laughs> <Dude. guy>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got great ears for music though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. it's I'll be especially then once she starts smoking weed, you really be like, God, <laughs> damn, oh, this music level. is <laughs> be flying through that motherfucker. Like, <laughs> that shit's <just> beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. dang. Yeah. So what about you, sir? Uh. I just wanted to bounce off real quick. That's real shit. Like you, that's real shit. What you saying? But uh, uh, what was the question? What uh, what type of music you were listening to? Oh, uh, man, I li- I used to listen to a lot of stuff. Like Nick said, I had a whole bunch of different phases and stuff. So it was times where like mm-hmm. I had a bunch of a whole bunch of Chicago stuff. Like I was slapping Ooh, a little dirt drill that music. Way. Chief Keith, yeah. turn it up. Man. But like growing up with my granny, like I was hit with the Al Green, Anita yeah. Baker, uh Michelle, yeah. stuff like that. Like I made a beat and I sampled uh Michelle, um, something you should know. Mm-hmm. That song slap. I, I still think to I think to this day <laughs> yes. somebody needs to Dre look this up. That no, really, somebody needs to look this up. I think to this day that's the first song with an eight oh eight. Damn! And somebody check this. Check this, that out. Somebody sure. check the. Hey, date fact stamp. check. Fact check. Because I, I think that, that was the first, the first song with 808. Because I'll be like listening to it, and I'm like, that's an 808, but they probably didn't even know it. I believe Dre produced that, didn't he? Did he? Is that Michelet? Mich- yeah. Michelet. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah. That's something See? in my heart. Yeah, I believe uh, Dre produced that. Oh, uh, something in my heart. Yeah, yeah. If I said something. You should know. Something yeah. in my yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I I used to listen to it. Cause I was in band and like. Fourth grade, okay. Like from like fourth grade, and then I was in drum line. So you're really so you musically inclined. Yeah, uh, yeah. I played the drums. I could play the drums. I play like four instruments. I could play a little bit of guitar, piano. Musically inclined, man. Like a shit mug. Like I, mean. I feel That's like, something. man, I'm trying to be like Kanye with this shit. I'm trying to have an ear for music. Like I, I listen. To, that's what I'm saying. I listen to all types of stuff. Like if Let's it's a bank, let's it, talk about some some Japanese dude. What year? 1981. What year did something uh, in my heart come out? Late 80s. Oh, okay. Late 80s. Yeah. All right. All right. But, uh, she like, I listen right, to but, but She probably the one that put it on the map, though. Like, or you could say did, probably she, she brought it into yeah. urban music. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So we'll say. She introduced it. She's the first for the. For the she, she's a, a staple. And Michelle, I love you. Because I, yeah. I listen to that song a lot. But anyway. But, um. 
Yeah, I, I listen to all types of stuff. If it's a banging ass country song, I'm a, I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah, like I'm a motherfucking do my two step or something to it. <laughs> like I used to listen to Skrillex a little bit. Oh, Skrillex, yeah, man, that's good. So, so, so we take. Go ahead and let them know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. So what music you used to listen oh, to? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Let them know. You yeah. can yeah, get in so, there. Yeah, let, let I us grew know. up on like West Coast music the majority of the time, like Ice Cube, uh, you know, Dre, Snoop, the whole death yeah, row. Mix. Yeah, then then my homeboy turned me on to like East Coast music to like like Nas and all that. So oh, I was yeah, on like nah. Nas and um was that Jay Z? You know, just different people like that. Then I got in on to uh then I started listening more to Lil Wayne, you know, Hot Boys when they came out. Until yeah, Lil Wayne had a, he was on the road at one time where he was just, Early he was taking over the game to me, you know what I'm saying? So I was kind of stuck on that. You from out here? Yeah, yeah, I'm from out here. <clears throat> well, I grew up listening to everything, really. Um, I ain't gonna say like I have like I don't have like a favorite artist. I do like I do like uh you know Kanye, Drake, and all that type of shit. Just like everybody else, I would say. But for the most part, when I was growing up, <sighs> shit Wu Tang probably J uh, Jay Z. Uh, I did used to listen to Tupac, even though like you know I'm not like the biggest like you know Tupac fan as far as music was, but I listen to Tupac. I listen to pretty much what yeah, everybody else I think else everybody listen. liked at least one Tupac song, though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I don't, I don't know, but Tupac always been more of, like, I like to, I, like, Tupac as a person. That that shit was more impactful than his music to me. So that's why I always say, like, his music cool, but him as a person was just crazy. Just like a dope, Just a dope dude. Yeah, like, hell everything yeah. Everything that he did was just impactful. Like, real shit. Like, he touched on everything that a lot of people wish they can touch on, so... You know, you know, rest in peace, Tupac. Yeah, Tupac. Who, who do y'all think killing the game right now? As, as far, far as, as local, or as far as mainstream, just just overall, just main. It could be mainstream. Lil Dirt. Everybody knows Drake can't be touched. He's the greatest oh, artist. Well, Drake is in a different category. Yeah. Drake is like Tom Brady. You can't, and yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. You can't. Drake is just Drake. You feel me? Drake don't compare to nobody. Yeah, he rapping right now. You know, he can make a hit off top. Exactly. He can drop like anything. He drops. Bullshit. Would anything. you? Would you say he's an icon? Yes. He's been an icon since 2009. I'll say that too. <laughs> when you dropped his first album, man, <laughs> like that nigga's an icon. So far gone nigga went out on the fucking man. Y'all get nigga what? Who who nigga else? Play that. Who else would you put in that category? That's an icon. In Drake's kid, Kendrick nah, Lamar, just J Cole. Just uh, period, like musically, because like then you know you can throw Beyonce up there. Oh, what do you say? Beyonce, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta put Beyonce. Icon. Beyonce. Like, who you think is the icon at this current time? Yeah, this current time, the icons Jay? is like Jay, Jay, Beyonce, uh, Nicki Minaj, yes, Drake, Drake, Lil Wayne, Drake, and Lil Wayne for the reason like that nigga really put like these two artists out and really that dominated the game for decades and they're still going like that shit is like blowing mind blowing to me how you like we pre-presented these niggas to us like fucking 11 years ago and like them niggas are still, still how their household it, names yeah. everybody knows who they are and still <laughs> man <laughs> like still man to this day, day. Yeah. Yeah. and like you you put their name on the track and it's going to go somewhere regardless hey listen shit even tiger still popping shit yeah <laughs> and tiger like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tiger be dropping something uh, tiger like, it's a lot of it's a lot of icon shit jay uh jay had rihanna and j cole for his his proteges, so shit, the niggas Kanye. Are still cause it's Kanye. You say Kanye was shit. That's a lot. Yeah, I would say Kanye is an icon. Crazy as fuck though, but he yeah, icon. <laughs> That's a lot of the mainstream folks. So like the new, the the new most relevant like little baby. That nigga is like everywhere. You buy one bullshit t shirt. All right, let me not say bullshit. You buy one of them yay t shirts. Fuck. Nah, I buy Yeezys though. Hell, I don't know, man. I don't like them Yeezys, man. I'm not feeling them either. Like Some of them like cool, Yeezys. like the the, the newest Some ones. I don't. I ain't really feeling them too much. Yeah. Nah, like so I wear some Yeezys. Them shits look comfortable as shit. Now, I ain't never bought a pair though, but you know what I'm saying. Shit, I wear some motherfucking Yeezys. You catch me checking the mail, grocery shopping in the motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some fucking Yeezys Yeezys House shoes <laughs> Check the be, bill For real you, <laughs> Nigga be the out bill? there Mowing the line Nigga in the motherfuckers Never no. Hey but uh So um, Since we're on Lil Wayne um, Donald Trump Pardoned Lil Wayne Kodak Black 
You guys listen to Kodak? How many times you, have you I think so? Huh? You think so? I know so. That one of the hardest <laughs> niggas I out right so. now. I gotta listen to him more. I, I really don't listen, really listen nigga, to him that listen, much. Nigga, listen to um Project Baby Two, the Deluxe Edition. Every <laughs> don't listen song to the regular one, the Deluxe. <laughs> Kodak needs to every get at me, man. song slap, yeah. nigga. Yeah, I gotta check that. From the top to the bottom, and that's just like twenty eight songs. 28 songs Some, It's like 20 songs though But like Okay, <laughs> like, I, okay I'm exaggerating It's like yo hey, I'm Them 20s but they 10 though Okay I'm it's exaggerating like, Not all 20 of them Is like just straight hitters But I'm gonna say At least 12 of them That's it's good for 20 songs Straight heat and I'm, and I'm not And I'm standing on that That nigga's hot as fuck <laughs> It's stupid But Music wise Can't be touched Lyrically, free Kodak. <laughs> no, he, he out. already free. Oh, he out. Yeah, yeah he's he free. Hard he so, hard so I'm gonna ask you guys a question. You get so, YF and Lucci next, then. <laughs> but, yeah, that's <laughs> that's still too <laughs> fresh. That's that's part of the Biden administration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna yeah, ask you a question. So, like, how you feel strongly feel about Kodak Black? So you know you're happy that new music is about to come and all that, right? Yes. Does that change your outlook on Trump? He you released your favorite artist. Fuck no, because that nigga still a white racist. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, you know, but money talk, you feel me? And, right. you know, it's shit that goes on in the business world that we don't know about because we not in their world. So, yeah, we can't, we just see the shit. We don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Right. So, there could have been some shit that Kodak was working with, with Trump years ago, and he just kind of, like, used it to his advantage now. Like, this was probably one of his blessings or something, you feel me? Like, I remember somebody was, like, comparing that nigga to, like, King David or some crazy shit. <laughs> There's some crazy shit going on But like I, I forgot where I seen that I probably seen it on like Twitter or something But like It's true Like that nigga do all the crazy dumb shit But like Stay Nigga just stay getting blessed Yeah It's just like Hey you can't You can't say nothing about it He's just you know He's, he's That nigga's literally a living story Yeah so, Did you Did you guys vote? Yeah, yeah. I didn't vote I You didn't vote? Ballot ballot. I just did it cause I could <laughs> Who you vote for, Kanye? Nah, I, I was about to. I was about to, but my girlfriend was like, "Nigga, you if you do that, go waste <laughs> the fuck it." Did y'all know what the fuck was going on at the current time? He was on the brick. Who you gonna vote for? Man, both this, both yeah, the niggas man. trash, bro. Yeah, real talk. You really ain't got no choice, man. You think anything's gonna be different? No, no. but it was it was more so to get that nigga out because this <laughs> this it's it don't matter I, who. It I think both of them are. Both shit, but it's more so the fact like this nigga created a whole like he brought back that whole like vibe in the country of just a whole split, just segregation. Like he incited violence, and it's like to a point where it's like niggas walking down the street and you have this tension for no reason, all because a nigga's in the fucking chair. He got these niggas pumping their chest around the neighborhood, and it's like, oh nigga, yeah, that's what's Real like. Talk. We we when the last time we've been at that point where. Motherfuckers is really just out here, just like, yeah, let's let's get Bro. reckless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm <racist>. Damn <laughs> so, what? Okay, hold on, hold on. Like, so, I used to do this Amazon like delivery job where I had to like dry the niggas' houses and you know li- deliver their shit to their front door, right? Right. And I was doing this in the white neighborhoods. This is like in Riverside and like big you know, houses, Valley, the big whole houses, nine, yeah, you know, little private communities, you know, and all the fucking turns and shit. So you you don't know your way around that motherfucker, yeah. bro. Every, like nigga, I'm going down streets, nigga. Every house, every other house got a big ass Trump poster. Yeah. Fucking make it great, 2020 and shit. Like them niggas is really gang members. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I was really scared to go yeah. down. over that Capitol yeah, building. Them niggas yeah. out there watering their grass with their big ass their truck, just looking at me like. <laughs> they in their neighborhood. It's funny that you say that, bro. Because just the other day, I was at this restaurant called uh, at this restaurant, and I was walking up. <clears throat> and it was like 15 of them motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> just kicking it, bro. Not no food to go bags, no nothing, bro. Just chilling. I'm like, this is a gang. Yeah, they <laughs> this is a gang. <laughs> they like sitting on their trucks and shit. This is a gang. Wow. Like, if it was niggas, police would roll up, ask what you're doing. Story. Yeah, police ask what you're doing. But nah, it's because they color ain't as dark, ain't, ain't got no color to it. They post it up. Nah, but, but <laughs> go see, the fuck home. But see, but see, that's this is if you look, if you look at the uh the bright side of the whole presidency, 
one one of the major things that it really did was uh make people want to do for self, bro. It really made Real people want to do for self and Facts. take the initiative because we can't let the outcome of us be determined by something other than or whatever else, something outside of our power, you know. Yeah. So I look at it that way, you know. Yeah. We we really starting to move now, so. I really Dude, we've been it. through a lot in 2020, man. It yeah. was so it's much. 2020 is gonna be one so many bucks. deaths, man, from that COVID. You know all that shit. Man, really? it's just too much, man. For for us to even survive that, though, man, that's that's good. Hey, you know what I'm saying? The kind of touch on what you said, like one thing, like you said, a lot of people actually take the time now to really break stuff down and understand what things mean. They're not letting shit go over their head anymore. Because, like, you know, you got to think a lot of bills and laws was passed and all that type of stuff. And, and the crazy thing about it is, is that, you know, the black vote is the most important vote. We're like, we're usually like 1%, half percent behind, you know, white American votes. So, you know, uh, it, it, it's crazy to think that, you know, we are in the media, they always try to make it seem like, oh, we don't vote or we don't do this, we don't do that. And I think that, you know, the election for uh, Biden showed that, you know, even though we may not agree with everything he's about, but it showed that people are willing to stand up and just go out and vote, even though we do it anyways. But it's good to see that now they know that we're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, took yeah, the man. initiative to do that. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and pulling together, moving in uh, in unity. You know, exactly. showing that, that power is. Yeah. yeah. That's real. So, um, so for uh, 2021, what are some of your goals? What are some of the things you're trying to accomplish and, you know, Trying to work, man. I'm trying to work, work, work. I'm trying to do so much this year, man. And like we trying to do so much this mm. year. Like we got so much stuff that we trying to work on that we are working on that we come got coming. I don't want to spill too many beans, but like it's a lot that like I'm trying to drop at least like seven tapes. Damn. Like I'm I'm and I'm serious. Like at least seven. And I'm already what one in. Already. I'm already one in. One in. All gas, man. Yes. Well, for 2021? 21. Nah. I mean, you got well, with Chad. Oh, oh, yeah. One I'm in. one in. So yeah, you got a project already out right now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, something okay. like my I twin. I just, some, some like my twin just dropped. Oh, yeah. Just like two days ago. Like when, two days. Yesterday. yesterday. You find that on Apple Music? Not yet. It's on YouTube. On YouTube? It's on YouTube. Okay. It's going to be on all, all platforms. ASAP. By the time this come out, it'll probably be all on all platforms. Platforms, my bad. But you can find yeah, it on check YouTube that out. Gotta check right now. YouTube and SoundCloud. But just like two, three weeks before that, I dropped another tape. Triathlon. My song. <laughs> Damn. My song Lil Titties was on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Titties is going work. crazy. Shout out my brother Luke So Glory. Shout, uh, yeah, that's. I wish he one could be here. Right. Ald brothers. You know he can't be here right now. It's, it's honestly a lot of us. It's honestly like eight of us. But you know. That's dope. That's you know, dope. this is a, but this is what represents us. You feel me? So, you know, they all here. They here with us because you know, we all talk about the same shit. So we all on the same page. But yeah, y'all get the idea. You feel me? <laughs> all right. So, so what are you, your uh, goals for twenty twenty one? To be honest, I really want to start doing interviews again. <laughs> I really want to get outside of the IE because you know I was really focused on the IE at first. Yeah, you know I know the world is way bigger than that, so I'm trying to expand. Really, that's what my goal is to expand, expand, not just with just not just with the interviews, but also with what I do. You feel me? So yeah. Like you know, I'm kind of da- like dabbling in some other things. I ain't. I don't know if I should really talk about them right now, but you know, there's other things that I'm getting into. Smash. So. I have a lot of, I have a lot of goals, but some of them I can't really talk about right now because yeah. I, I can't, I ain't really, you know, no, that, without what you. I'm doing yet. So, yeah, I got some stuff coming. Oh, well, one thing I want to add though too, oh, okay. please okay. make sure, make sure you give us all your information because I want to put it all in the description. For sure. So, so everybody know where to get, hit you guys up. Cause like I said, you guys are you guys are popping out here. Like, like I said, I always hear I'm this the right. Oh yeah. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is C Cut, the King Cut right here himself, you know. So everybody know this man. So since we oh yeah headed that way, then we're gonna get back to you, D. He's like, man, stop calling me D. <laughs> <laughs> uh this this year, 
what I got planned. I really, when it comes to like goals, I don't know. I don't, I don't set them like most people set them. I kind of like just as I'm flowing, I see what I need to do. Okay, okay, so let's knock this out. This is part of the vision now, and I really just listen. Like I, I like I said, I get visions and I see. Okay, well, this is the way to go. It's, it's not always about what I want to do, but this is what's actually next for me to do to be who I gotta be. But um. Expand on my barber stuff. Really, really focus. Um, expand the shop. Get get some barbers in there. Really start teaching. Um, just really focus and, and get stuff done. Okay, so, yeah, please give me the location so we can put that down. Get you out there. You know what I'm saying? All right, so on to my, on to my smooth uh, R&B brother over there. Oh, oh. Uh. Right now, I'm just trying to get this uh, EP pretty much finished right now that I've been working on. And uh, that's pretty much what I've been working on, trying to get that done. I want to do, I'm working on an uh, actual full album right now. So I've just been gathering like the other beats that I want and just been putting them to the side and just kind of gathering my like concepts. But I'm trying to just get this one put out. Hopefully, like within the next month, I'll have it all together and ready to go. And then. Pretty much finished this this book adaptation, this uh, black serial killer little shit that I'm working on. So that's what I got going. Man, don't ever call your work shit, man. You working? I on mean, it, it's man. just this. And don't call I, it I, little. I, I'm still like putting it. It's all. The, it's like a lot of just like it's a whole different like vibe with writing the book because it's like every time you getting ready to get to the next point, you like you still got to go back and finish explaining it because the flow be off when you don't. Right, and I'm so picky. I'm like, I I wanted to be some because I be looking at the media, and I'm just like, a lot of this shit is like just repetitive, and like there's no like no specialness to it. And I'm tired of seeing just the same type of people. I want like some different vibes, and I want to, especially with like my writing, I want to put black people in different spaces. So, and he gave me this crazy ass idea with this like. Black people being like, hey, save it, save I mean, it. You, know, you don't want nobody to steal your ideas. Save he, it. But yeah, he gave me this crazy ass shit, like this vibe. And he was like, bro, I want to like, what if they was in this position? And I'm like, all right. And I was formulating that shit. And like, I'm like, that shit gonna go crazy because I'm like, we just need to be in different light. We don't always, um, we don't always gotta like the shows is dope, but like power, like the show dope, but like we don't always have to be in that right. that same scenario. Like we can be in different lights and still be normal, right? And they they don't put us in those they different like contexts. Stereotype us in yeah. one room, and it's like we don't. You can reimagine the world. We don't give an, give ourselves enough control of how we present shit. So, I mean, like you can make whatever if you it's coming out of your mind. Like you don't have to put it inside the formula. Remake the formula. Hey, you know what? And uh, I would like to. Once you guys get to those goals, we want to sit down with you guys again. Oh yeah, and kind of like you know what I'm saying. Talk about Stop where you guys are at with it or, you know, how you guys feel about the projects and things that you guys completed. Yeah. But that's dope, you know. Of course, you know, me and my, well, me yeah. personally, my I'm goal, I, we we did a podcast. And we Hopefully we'll put it in the description where we talked about our vision boards and stuff like that. So we just want to get this podcast going, get it up and moving. Um yeah, my, my focus, yeah, mainly the podcast. I do have my music. I, I do rap, too. You know, I got my um, my project out on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, uh, YouTube. It's called uh, 2020 Vision. It's with me and my boy, Alter Ego, Steel Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you ain't supposed to be telling people that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, does, he does the beats for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's a good project, man. Y'all should check it out when y'all get a chance. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that and just the podcast getting it off the ground. You know, you could check us out on Him Dub H Y M M D U P. So, yeah, thank you guys. Um, so, um, uh, any, any uh, last words? Anything? Nah, at first it didn't click, but now I know because I was like, once you said you started doing music, I was like, that voice sound familiar because I'll be hearing you. Uh, Make music with that nigga Rex. That oh nigga yeah, yeah, that's my boy. Rex? Yeah, yeah really? that's my boy Rex. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Yeah, I was like, hold up. I was like, it makes sense now. I was like, okay. Oh, you be hanging with that I'm nigga, sure, huh? Yeah, I'm for sure gonna check that shit out. Yeah. So, um, any anything else you guys want to kind of put out there? So hold on, 
this nigga was saying something earlier with like he was talking about somebody was like being able to like connect with people and they not like uh without like the um without um like how social media is nowadays like he didn't have that platform but he was still able to reach that many people do y'all still think that's possible with social media being the way it is nowadays or do you still or is that like not really like that not really necessary like that person to person connection like actually going out and doing shows and like meeting people and talking to different people in the industry and all that shit like you think that shit played out now? Like I feel like it take from it, honestly. Like the social media, it's like a whole different life. It's yeah. like because you, everybody in this room knows that people get on social media and they develop a whole new light, yeah. life, personality, whatever it may be. Do we feel like it hinders? No, that's what he left off on. But like I'm saying, like, it, do you think people like? Do you think the dynamic? Oh, do you think the dynamics of like music are changing, like the way people uh like perceiving on how to like gain success in music and or like, you know, just doing anything creative, like any creative endeavors or whatever. Yeah, I mean everything it. everything is changing right now. Everything is in the midst of changing. And um it's like time has really pushed stuff together in a way to where you force to the name is perfect. Adapt. You're forced to adapt. Otherwise, you're not going to be around to move forward into what's coming. Mm-hmm. Right. So everything is just naturally adapting. Certain certain um, sections or groups or, or cultures are starting to merge. Certain certain things are starting to merge, like um, video gaming and, and uh, music. They merge and they're coming together now. So that's just like an expansion of the music industry. It's starting to really um, expand in different ways and and, and, and really connect to people in a different way. I recently just found out, like, street music isn't just about being in your area no more. You can have street music and not even be popping in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like, shit changing. Huh? I look at it like, you know, with with today, like how you were saying, like, I, I feel like you can't really connect with the people. It's my, I mean, everything is social media. So when you, when the good thing about it, though, is that, a lot of all this COVID going on, people not really going out. People want something to watch and something to listen to, you know, so they go straight to the internet. It's more people being on the internet than anything else right now. You know what I'm saying? So putting out different things, people want something to watch, something to listen yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? So that's the good part about it. But you do want to get out, you know what I'm saying? Network and do what you need to do as far as that part too. But you know, a good thing though, you know, uh, a new app just called like Clubhouse. It's another, yeah. it's another yeah, little social I heard media about thing. that. Yeah. That's a good networking social media. Yeah. yeah. Because that's real time. That's not dropping a comment and somebody seeing it 20 yeah. minutes, two hours, two days later. That's real time. Like you on a phone with a with somebody. You just in a room. Right. And like I didn't have plenty of good conversations on a uh, Clubhouse with some with some names yeah. like like household names like up there like and and they see the work you know. They just say you just keep stay on the same path and you just you and just pretty much dropping gems. Right. But that's I just say that because Clubhouse is one of them social medias that could be used to your advantage as far as a hindrance. You know, like being able to real time speak with these people in in your field of of entertainment, like like me being making music, I was talking to um um what do you call it? Uh 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 Brian Salas. Um, um, a manager of what you call it, Papa Got Beats, whatever. Oh, okay. And he was just dropping gems, game, and stuff like that. But it, I just feel like that's more better than than fucking like dropping a comment on like IG or Facebook or yeah. something. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you know with social media, I think that I think that. You know, as far as being one to one with people, I think it's just that sometimes people just don't really have the time or the care to do it. I think if anything, like now you have the proof on what works and what doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? As far as your analytics and stuff like that. And, you know, so I think social media, it has made people business savvy when they probably would have never been business savvy if social media was never created. So it's created, made it to where 
you can have a brand, 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 and it won't interfere with his brand. It won't interfere with your brand. It's like you know what your core following wants, and you can cater just to that and not have to worry about somebody bleeding into what you're doing. Yeah, you're cutting out the middleman and just direct to consumers. So that's way better now. So I think that's why I think that social media is like – and especially right now is at an all time high. Yeah, it's because of COVID and stuff like that. But I think that now people, like you said earlier, are more aware of of what they're capable, you know, of what they're capable of, and they know more. There, everybody's you, trying to start a brand. Yeah, yeah, everybody's exactly. Trying to do something. Everybody is because like it's the new depression. Like everybody yeah. trying to get up out that rut. Exactly. Like For, it forces really you to. Shit. Forces you to get the knowledge, you're looking up tutorials, doing all these different things to, you know, expand your mind and get things going for yourself. <laughs> you know the thing, like we talk about this all the time. These tutorials, bro, it always be somebody from a different country. I swear oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got this idea. I think it's easier to get popping in other countries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. They, they, and they appreciate it a lot more. Exactly. They love yeah. our lifestyle. And same thing with, with some of us out here. We love theirs also. Yeah, yeah exactly. I never thought of it like that. Might have to use that little strategy. Yeah. Shh, don't. Hey, and you know what the crazy thing is? There's a lot of uh, a lot of our artists that we see, you know, whether they're big now or big in the past, that they blew up overseas. Yeah, six you nine know, did. Six yeah, nine. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, twenty four hours. Golden twenty. No. Nah, nah, no, just twenty four hours. Nah, like he's his name. Twenty four hours. He uh he uh rap with hip boy. He sings rap, whatever. But I remember him on Facebook like. Uh, earlier on, earlier earlier on in Facebook. That's his name? Yeah. Twenty four. Twenty four K Golden? No, 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 no. His name is Twenty Four Hours. Okay. It's uh, Sounds what's familiar. it? He has a brother. His brother rap. It's like Tokyo or something like that. Y'all young. <laughs> she, but nah, but yo, shout, I put, shout out to him though. <laughs> yeah, shout out to him. But nah, he um, he blew up in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. Uh, that's where I uh, was uh, following him from. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, so you know, like I said, you can blow up in uh, other state. I mean, other countries. They really do appreciate the music more, like. I just I, I figured that out when I had because I be going to Mexico a lot, and they be out there listening to that West Coast rap a lot. Like to this day, they don't even know what the fuck that shit be saying, but they know all the words, nigga. They know all the words in English, but not know what the fuck they saying at all. That's crazy. But they just it's just like nigga. They appreciate the good music. They appreciate the beat, nigga. The way nigga sound on it. That no, like that Bone Thugs, nigga. They be doing that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll be like, damn, that shit crazy. But, like, niggas don't understand. Like, I think that's a big part of blowing up. Because those is what, those, those white people, those Europeans, those people in Poland, right. the Czech, the Czech Republic, all that shit, those are the niggas that be really paying for music and buying concert tickets. That's why people be doing a lot of shows out of state and shit. They be making money out there. You definitely get a bag overseas yes. and all that. So. Yeah, and you get some. You get to travel. <laughs> yeah, nah, That's the big part. Let me travel. Hey, real quick. Uh, you think Tory Lane shot Megan Thee Stallion? <laughs> <laughs> Do I think he shot her? Um, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't stop with the twenty two. Like, I don't think so. You gonna be honest? Nah, I want to hear what you. Okay, so do I think he shot her? Mm, I kind of think the story made up though. You think it's all fake? I think so. I she got, is good twerking yeah. and shit now, huh? Well, she well, she got shot in the foot and then she was twerking like the week later. <laughs> you know but saying? but like but the, let, let's let's define what she wasn't shot. She was grazed. Like she wasn't yeah. like really shot. Like you know when a motherfucker got shot. The story don't add up though because I, I I didn't seen so, I didn't seen the footage. I guess she you seen the she footage was, where she got shot. No, nah, no, nah, where she got out the oh. she was like outside oh, the car camera. or something. Yeah. But they're like, okay, so he said that, okay, so just think, like, she got shot and then she got back in the car with him and drove down the street. So that don't make sense. Uh, it don't add up. And then, <laughs> then you got, we got to take, we got to take into consideration that he's been, the charges been dropped against him. So it's a lot like, damn, like, the, like, she probably couldn't really clarify who shot her. She just said he did it. Huh? 
I think he shot that bitch. Pop, <laughs> 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 bitch. <laughs> back, back. <laughs> she she big. Probably did. Yeah, she probably like they said he was what like five four. Yeah, yeah. yeah that nigga short. That nigga's five four, bro. <laughs> That's a little like nigga. this stand is probably like five four. <laughs> How tall is she? She like six feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's like six two, nigga. <laughs> Hey yo, that's a hey, that's a Amazonian woman. That's like some motherfucking uh, yeah, uh, Wonder tree. Woman and shit. That's a woman for sure. I ain't sure. gonna say too much. I, I climb that. Tree. I ain't gonna say too much. Somebody might get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, then keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Try to think of that wife and Lucci. Y'all think you gonna get out? Nope. <laughs> that nigga's done. Huh? What are you in there for? They ain't never like two murders or something like that. Damn, something like that. Well, he, well, he's not. He didn't murder. He's pretty much an accessory because he he was a getaway driver. Yeah, allegedly. What is what niggas like it, of his level driving murder cars for, bro? If you got that much money, that's what I'm. Talking if about. if you at that point, go take a chain off, give it to a nigga, and have him drive. Yeah. <laughs> You could like, always have why else. throw your career and life away for that? That don't make sense. But you know what it is? I think what it is, a lot of times, they just want to make pe- let people know that they, I'm not like these other rap niggas. You know, they still living off of that. I got to prove a point. I ain't like these other niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'll pull up. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? I, to me, personally, I don't think you got to have one foot in, one foot out like that. You know what I'm saying? You got to either be fully into the music or fully in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you could be doing both like that. I don't know what I'm saying know, if you do be it, trying. you know there's consequences behind it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I watch a lot of those interviews that are like the old like rap niggas and stuff, and like they be all all of them say the same thing. It's like when you get to that level, you you don't. Want, first of all, you ain't got to prove nothing, and second of all, you ain't supposed to be out there doing that shit yourself. Yeah. Go have somebody do that for you. Like that's retarded, because you at you gonna. Throw your risk your life just to prove a point to another person. And if you are That's doing goofy. it, don't be talking about it in your music. You know what I'm saying? If you are doing it, you, you know what I'm saying? Because you you just drawing attention to yourself to where they using that for ev- cases or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They going straight to the music. Hey, they, you know, and that's funny you said that because I'm they was talking about Lil Dirk said that you know people talking about stuff on YouTube is a form of snitching. So whether you are talking about it in the way seen like that post. yeah, you seen that post yeah. right? So, like, you know, snitching is a, a big, big, big topic, especially in the music industry, because, like you say, people are put in certain situations to where they're going to be forced to tell. Do I think YFN Lucci going to tell? I'm pretty sure he's going to get turnover. <laughs> think so? Bro, I think don't, about it. I don't, I don't think he, I don't think he, he is. Nigga, like, what do we, right, like, let's daughter, think about this. <laughs> Look, that's Listen, it. Think he going for that's it. it, bro. He got a daughter, nigga. He nigga, nigga over. he so got daughters. Said, <laughs> said, yeah. said that's all it take, right there. Yeah, that's all it takes, bro. Think <laughs> about it, man. You got a bag waiting for you on the outside, bro. Fuck that bag. He, he's, he's doing real good. Kids, he's doing real good in the music you, business. Too. He got a bag. He got Lil Wayne daughter. He got everything. He's like, nigga, I got to get out of here. You nigga. got all that, that. And why is you fucking pulling skits? That part, exactly. But you, why is but, you pulling skits? But you know what it I is, though, caught. nigga. Because you know what it is. He probably did that that type of shit before. I'm not trying to pin nothing on him, but he probably got away when he thought allegedly. he could do that shit again. <laughs> Probably. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah, all this is allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. But nah, man, that he gonna he gonna turn. Every nigga, like, there's no way in hell this nigga gonna go to jail and do that much time, man, nigga. If that nigga chin get up. out free take K. If he, if that nigga, <laughs> hey, free take K for, for real. real. For real. <laughs> it's like free take. It's not. Yeah. It's, don't forget about that free nigga would have the hottest album of the last three years, nigga. Damn, man, man. crazy. So I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys for um, showing up, doing a podcast. Um, I appreciate you especially because I know you was on a mission to get here. Uh, I seen I seen your little post. He's like, "Damn, only in California where you got snow in the desert, the snow <laughs> in the desert in the same damn place. Yeah. You look to the left and it's literally dry as desert. You look to the right, it's snow." <laughs> so I appreciate you for coming out. I appreciate you guys for coming out. I appreciate you, sir, for coming out. Thank you, thank 